from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I haven't asked you this question in a while, but I want to ask it because every now and then it's just good to uh, keep in touch with what you're up to. Keep in touch with what's happening to you. And uh, that's what I'm going to do here. Now, as you know, your genial host on the Tom Likas show has decided, uh, kids, not for me. Love them. Love kids. Always wondering, uh, you know, how uh, my nephew is doing, Ryan, who is just spectacular. Keep in touch with him. Ryan got a little gifty from me today in the mail, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And uh, I love it. I've got a great relationship with Ryan. I, I think he's the best. Ryan actually came in a couple of months ago and sat in with me for an hour. Did not go on the air. Sat and watched the show for a while. He's seven. He's going to be raised right. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't have to, like, uh, get involved in, you know, if he gets sick, I don't have to stay home. I don't have to pick him up at school. My brother and my sister-in-law take care of all the heavy lifting. By the way, they've done a great job with him. He's a great kid. And one of the reasons I love hanging out with him is because they've done such a great job with him. But the great thing about being an uncle, I don't have to do any of the work. I just get all the accolades. And that's fantastic. I love that. Having kids is not something I ever wanted to do. I have been the uh, person, as you know, who has paid for four abortions. I've always been very open and honest about this. One of the four actually has tried to get on the air. She wants to tell how much she regrets having the abortion. Our kid would be 18 this year. Oh, my God, he'd be graduating high school. I want to go on and tell everybody I'm sorry I had the abortion. Oh, Jesus. Let me pass it on to you. One of the four regrets it. The other three have not expressed such an opinion. <laughs> but now I can be honest. I can say, yes, one of them is like, one of them cooperated at the time and now regrets it. That can happen. But uh, my whole thing has always been, you know, okay, we'll have sex, but if you get pregnant, you're going to have an abortion. Right? Right? And I must say that the four women who had the abortions were good to their word. Of course, I grilled them. <laughs> I gave them the third degree. I gave many women the third degree. <laughs> oh, yeah. I gave many women the third degree. And many of them did not pass the test. They said things like, well, I'm sure if I got pregnant, I'd... I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have the kid. Pretty sure. Nice knowing you. I'm not sure what it... Thank you. Well, I've never really thought of... Thank you. If the answer wasn't no, I wouldn't have the child. Without any hesitation, out. 
And my method must have worked because here I am, 51 years old, doing a radio show. I am child-free. I am without child. And uh, being as well-known as I am and make as much money as I do, if I had had a kid, it is my fervent belief that by now I would have heard about it. By the way, if you've had my kid, let's keep it the way it is. Don't tell me. Don't want to know. But yes, I've paid for four abortions. And that's because I wanted to make sure the abortions were had. Plus, I had the fifth woman. I don't know if she still lives out there in Westwood on Gailey. You know who you were. <laughs> the chick who uh, kept saying she wasn't sure if she was pregnant. But she didn't want to go to the doctor to get tested to see if she was pregnant. And she tried to squeeze meals out of me and phone calls and time spent with her for about a month. There we were in Westwood. What's the name of that? Uh, what's the name of that restaurant up on top of the building in in Westwood? It's like a steak place. Monty's, right? Monty's. There we were at Monty's. She lived on Gailey Avenue in Westwood, and I remember we. <laughs> There we are, waiting for our reservation. This chick who, uh, you know, I did not want to see anymore. There we were sitting there. I was a hostage, sitting there having dinner with her. She didn't want to talk about the kid. She just wanted to have dinner. Holy Christ. It finally turned out after four brutalizing weeks that she finally admitted that she was not pregnant. But she took me through four weeks of living hell. Right now, she's probably about 40 years old and married to somebody else. She is somebody else's problem. That's right. She's probably married to a guy named Dr. Shapiro. <laughs> I just know it. But she's not with me. She's Dr. Shapiro's problem. That's all I'm going to say. By the way, that was my favorite prank call. I used to call the Yankee Stadium when I was a kid. This is true. Grew up in the Bronx. And I grew up in the years when the Yankees really stunk. They really stunk. And I used to call the Yankee Stadium. And I used to ask for the press box. I used to ask if they could page Dr. Shapiro. <laughs> Just to see the... Uh, cavalcade of people who would show up claiming to be Dr. Shapiro. <laughs> In New York, there's a lot of Dr. Shapiros. Nonetheless, okay, so here I am. I've paid for four abortions. The fifth one was uh, not necessary. But uh, I'm proud to say that I did it. I would do it again. Yes, I will go there. I will hold your hand. I will wield my platinum card. I will pay for the abortion best investments I ever made. The best. By the way, <laughs> if that woman is out there, that's coming up on uh, what would have been his high school graduation. He'd be going to the prom right now. Our son or daughter would be going to the prom right now. <laughs> Instead, if... Uh, if our child does attend the prom, he'll be uh, attending in a mason jar. <laughs> but we'll not be attending. We'll not be renting a limo or paying for anybody's flowers. I will tell you that right now. Bottom line. Now, as you know, on this program, I have recommended something called the Hail Mary. And that is where I tell you how to convince the woman you're with to have an abortion. And many of you uh, have credited the Hail Mary with saving your life, saving your education, saving your money, saving everything. And you know what a Hail Mary is. That's when you tell a woman that you're really in love with her, and you know she wants to have that baby she's pregnant with, but hey, now's not the time. You don't have the money. You don't have a down payment. You don't have a house. You don't have a nursery. 
you haven't finished college yet or whatever. So what you're going to do is uh, you promise that if she has the abortion now, later on you'll have a gaggle of children. You'll just be cranking them out like there's no tomorrow. And if you convince her to uh, have the abortion, you pay for it. You go down there with her when she has it under the guise of holding her hand and being there as her support. But the real reason you're going, which you don't tell her, is to confirm that she went to the women's clinic and had the work done. Then you pay, which is the final confirmation. And then once you're done with the abortion, you take her up. Uh, well, on the way home, you stop off at McDonald's, get her the egg McMuffin. That's kind of the sign that you've been had. Uh, you take her home with the egg McMuffin, and then you uh, you know, tell her, what you don't want, take a mental health day for today. Just go home, lie down, relax. I'll come home and tuck you in. So you tuck her in. And then once you have tucked her in, you say, that's it, I'm out of here. You just cut that bitch out of your life and you never see her again. That's a Hail Mary. Many of our listeners have utilized the Hail Mary, even though, by the way, I've told you how to avoid getting women pregnant, how to avoid uh, being with women who want to have babies. Some of you have paid no attention to my years of experience and gone ahead and done it your own way. But I'm wondering how many of you have successfully executed a Hail Mary. If you've done it, I want to hear your recent story. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. I'm calling for all the ladies. You are a horrible man. You are a horrible man. It's the Tom Likas Show. on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Great. All right. I'll make it quick for you. My Hail Mary experience. Uh, bartended for a few years. Always kind of got the pick of the litter, all the new ones that were coming in there. I uh, landed a little 18-year-old uh, girl right out of high school. Uh, kind of went out for a while. She, of course, ended up getting pregnant pretty much after she found out one of her friends was pregnant. She wanted to have one. Anyways, um explain to her I'm starting my own business and now's not the time. I don't have time for all that or the money. Uh, explained to her, yeah, in about a year we would have kids when we were ready and we had our own place and went to have the abortion and just like you said, I go to pull the collar around to help her, you know, and just never picked her up. How did she react to that? Um, blew up my phone for weeks and weeks, just never answered. Uh, as she, some of her friends started calling. I mean, it was just crazy. I just, you know, did everything I can not to listen, not to pay attention. Uh, I heard it from a couple mutual friends because I got out of that uh, bartending job after that. And, yeah, it's been staying away ever since. Love it. Yes, and I owe it all to you. I mean, if I didn't know about that way to get out of it, I mean, I probably would have a kid right now. I'm proud of you, Nick. Now, 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 really, you're not going to be knocking anybody else up, are you? No, no, I am. I always use a condom, like you say. I always strap it up. Uh, I don't know if she tampered with it or what. So, but yeah, pretty much, I'll be more careful on that side. Please do. <laughs> all right, but uh, can you take me out, Kobe stuff? I certainly can, Nick. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Hey, real quick, just you were talking about the the funny story. I mean, you said you were nervous for four weeks with the girl up in uh, Westwood. I had an interesting one uh, quite recently. I thought you'd get a ride out of start start dating this girl, and uh, after about two months, of course, being careful, and uh, tells me one day I'm late. So I, I'm trying to figure out how she can be late. There's two options: either she's tampering with the evidence or with the uh, 
the condom or uh, she's doing somebody else. So a week goes by, she's still late. Twelve days go by, she's still late. Comes over one night, tells me I'm 12 days late. I'm having a heart attack. Um, as she's sitting next to me, breaks down in an emotional cry, just bawling her eyes out. Well, I said, let's, let's, let's talk about this. You know, there's there's options. Number one, she hadn't taken a test yet. But there's options. She looks at me in the face and says, nope, you're not, we're not having an abortion. I'm having a baby. Deal with it. Tom, what did I do? I got the hell out of there. She wasn't pregnant. She had her period a couple of days later, and I was gone. <laughs> haven't, spoken, haven't spoken to her since. I lo- did she uh, blow up your phone? Oh, nonstop. Nonstop. Wow. Unbelievable. But I just... I. I thought it was funny because, that, I mean, four weeks is a, is a long time, but I went through for, for damn near 14 days, and I about had a heart attack. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, terrible. And the worst part was the emotional breakdown at the house. Boo, hoo, 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 hoo. Oh. And it's funny because she tells me later on that the reason why she would never have an abortion, which was kind of similar to what you were saying, is that she had one prior, and she still thinks about how old her son or daughter would have been. Oh, my nowadays. God. Oh, what a nightmare. Just getting that call. Nightmare. Our, our son would have been 18. <laughs> Hey Tom, I got to tell you, my dad turned me on, turned me on to you about 15 years ago, and I just get a ride every time I listen to you. I love that. Have a good one, Tom. Thanks for the phone call. Thank you, Mike. Did I call you? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Have you pulled a hail mary recently? Tom on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going, Dad? Great, son. Yep. I did a classic one about three years ago, listening to your show, followed the instructions. Uh, Usually I play by the rules, always use a condom every time. One time, made a drunken mistake, and a girl comes back about four or five weeks later and tells me she's pregnant. So, you know, I take her down, we buy the uh, pregnancy test, go through the whole ordeal, and she ends up being pregnant, says she thinks she might want to keep it. So I talk her into uh, going to a clinic, driving up to the clinic to get an official test. She kind of tries to back out on me, Tom. She tries to change her mind. Really? Yep. So in the car, on the way into the clinic to go get the official, actual, real test, I uh, tell her the whole story. You know, we're going to be together for a long time. I really like you. You know, we should have hung out more, whatever, whatever. She takes it, hook, line, and sinker. We go inside, do the deal. She really is pregnant. Make the appointment for the abortion. I hang out with her every day after that, 10 hours a day probably, all the time. She stays the night at my house every day. Then we take her. She goes and gets it done. This is like around 1, 2 in the afternoon. Right after, take her to McDonald's, chicken nuggets. Really? Yep. You can't get the breakfast sandwich in the morning. Yeah, you have to have the abortion before 10.30 a.m. or you can't do the egg McMuffin. I know. So anyway, we do the chicken nuggets and the french fries, take her home, put her in bed. She falls asleep. When she woke up, I was gone. Never talked to her again after that. Wow. Did she blow up your phone? Yeah, for like two weeks straight. All her friends are calling me, people blowing up the MySpace page, all kinds of stuff. (laughs) Have you had one moment of regret about this? No. I, you know, if it wasn't for you, I, I probably still would have tried to go through with it, but I wouldn't have had the, the technique to apply. So the technique is what did it? Uh, I'm I'm positive that's what did it. Everything it. worked perfect. Oh, I love that. Thanks and, a lot, Tom. And she got the chicken nuggets, which I think is great. Yep. Can you take me out? Because as, as, as they say at McDonald's, I'm loving it. And believe me, I do love McDonald's. Love it. Yep. I mean, McDonald's is perfect for every occasion. I am a, I have been a fan of McDonald's since I was nine years old. I saw one of the first McDonald's and I was in love. <laughs> That's why I know, 10.30 a.m., midnight generally they close, except some are open late. I know. I'm all over it. Take out how? Take me out, Halle Berry. Style. Halle Berry style. Sure I can. <laughs> Oh, 
am I kidding? As they say at McDonald's, I'm loving I love McDonald's. Care what they say. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Stan, just get distracted by the word McDonald's. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Danielle, of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. How are you? Great. Um, I'm calling just in response to the guys that are saying. They're just leaving girls pregnant. I'm kind of not really sure. No, no, they're not that. leaving girls pregnant. They're leaving them after they have an abortion. Yeah, but they're that's kind of like saying that it's okay. Like that, they, what's you know, okay? It's not just having an abortion. Saying that what's okay? Having an abortion. Of course, it's okay. It's okay under certain circumstances. Who said? Who said? Who decided that? It's. Just, I'm not saying it's like one. You know, either or. Who decided that? No one decided it. So that's your opinion. My personal opinion, yeah. This is your opinion, your personal opinion. Mm -hmm. What other opinion do you express besides your personal opinion? Do you borrow the opinion of the person next door? No, do you? I mean, that's kind of redundant. Well, I don't say in my personal opinion. Every opinion I have is my personal opinion. Yeah, so this that's is like mine. That's like on the news where they say that a, a body was found lying in a pool of its own blood. It's like... Well, who else's blood would be found in a pool of? Of course. It's a That's stupid statement. It's Just say it's in a pool of blood. You know what I'm saying? A pool of his own blood. It's stupid. So to say you're expressing your own personal opinion, it's like, yeah, usually I borrow somebody else's opinion. But this time, I've decided to express my own personal opinion. What else would there be? That's what I'm calling Well, that's for. why you shouldn't use a redundant phrase like, in my own personal opinion. I didn't. I said my opinion, and then you said whose opinion. And well, I said no, mine. no, you didn't. No, opinion. you didn't. Yes, anyway, did. so what? So what is it you're calling to say, dear? That there's something wrong with having an abortion? No, I'm not saying there's something wrong Good. with that. But Great. I'm not saying that the guy just easily gets off the hook. Like, oh, why should he be on the hook for? Is this a crime? Pregnant. Getting somebody pregnant? Is this like a a felony it's or just, something? It's just the woman's fault. I don't care whose fault it is. That I only care about the bottom line. I don't care whose fault it was. Doesn't matter. They're kind of uh, grown up. If they're grown enough to grown up enough to do it, they should be man enough to stay around and either help the situation and not just ignore someone's phone calls after going through something like that. Why? It's, it's not our problem. You know what? Yeah, it, it, any woman who tells me uh, that she's having the baby, whether I like it or not, is going to get chopped off of the knees ultimately. Yeah, but you had something to do with it. I don't care. I don't, I know, but the point is, I don't have any hand in the final decision. It's not immaculate conception. I don't have any point, any uh, uh, say in the final decision. So, therefore, if she decides to do something I don't want done, then I'm not going to get involved in it. That's it, period. No one is going to tell me, no one's going to dictate to me that I have to be involved in something I don't want to be involved in. So you would leave a child knowing that it's yours and just leave the girl to deal with it. Well, first own. of all, none of the callers have done that. They all left women who had abortions. Yes, because they kind of conned them into it saying, oh, well, well but they, but the point is what they really did, what they really did was they smoked these women out because at first these women said, I'm not having an abortion. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. So if you go ahead and have one after that, what it means is it's not that you thought abortion was wrong. What it means is that you wanted to keep a guy in a relationship that he did not want to be in and you wanted to use a baby as the device to do that. So by saying, oh, we'll, we'll get married down the line and we'll have babies. If she has the abortion, she has been smoked out as a fake. Really? You think yes. women would rather at whatever age these people are at, in young relationships or not very long-term relationships, would rather have a baby just to... That's making an assumption. Well, then why would they have an abortion? If, why don't they stick to their guns? Because maybe they're really in love with someone or trying to make a relationship. Again, that's work. my maybe point. They're not really sure the guy does not want to be in a relationship. He wants to get laid. Yeah, but just to leave someone after going through that and not answer right. the phone call That's is right. very immature. I would do the same thing. Well, how, you're a grown man. Yes, I am. Don't you think that's kind of pathetic? I don't really care what you think or anyone else thinks. I care about what's good for me. And 
leaving someone after going through that. By all means. Because you know why? Because that person just tried to trick me into a relationship I didn't want to be in. By your you know, male part impregnated. That had nothing to do with that had nothing to do with tricking. That does not mean I should be tricked into a relationship. These two things have nothing to do with each other. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. It takes one act to Doesn't mean I have to have a relationship with the person. Well, then maybe you should think of protecting yourself. I do. I use condoms 100% of the time, dear. So what? So these other guys obviously didn't. Well, guess what? I have gotten women pregnant while using condoms. Really? Yeah, because condoms are only about 95% effective. Well, I just think it's not something really awesome to advertise. Oh, yeah, just oh. calling girls into well, having a Why not? It works. It works. It's, not some, it's a man you would never understand what it feels like to be pregnant and have that happen to well, you. Well, yeah, you know you, what? You, maybe you, you should have done something. Maybe you should have done something to protect yourself against getting pregnant. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I really But you didn't, and so why should we feel sorry for you? It's not me. And why should we have to sit on the phone and listen to you cry and whine for weeks after you had the abortion? Boo freaking who? Yeah, well, what comes around goes around. Uh, I, no, it doesn't. I've, yeah, uh, I've paid for four that. abortions, and uh, not, yeah, I'm living a very happy life. To brag about. Oh, I'm bragging about it, dear. Do you think it's something to brag about, paying yes. for four abortions? Yes, yes. And you really think that all the times four people got pregnant, just your condom broke? I don't care what the reason is. I don't care what the reason is. Well, to each his own, I guess. Every but. woman I had sex with knew I did not want to have a baby. Well, not every man is as innocent as they may seem. I don't care about the other men. I'm talking about myself now. Talking about the guys who called in. The guys who called in, they, they all smoked out liars who said they were anti-abortion, they were not going to have an abortion, and by promising that they would get married to them down the line and have babies down the line, uh, they fell for it and uh, had the abortion. So they were not anti-abortion because they were religious or because they had strong principles. They were anti-abortion because they wanted to suck the guy into a relationship that he did not want to be in. That's a big assumption to assume that that's just why these women wanted to keep the baby to keep. Oh, why didn't they keep it? Why, if they really wanted to keep the baby, why didn't they keep it? That's their own personal choice. I don't why know didn't women. they keep it? I have no. If idea. If they wanted to keep it, they would have kept it. Maybe they just didn't feel they were ready, and they're perfect. Then their they shouldn't be weeping. They should be as they should be happy that the man did them a favor and got them to do what they should have done anyway. I don't know. I disagree. I don't think it's something that you should be praising guys for. I'm not just praising them. I'm encouraging them. I'm instructing them on how to do it. Yeah, but it's a life. I'm pro. That's your opinion. A life. So then don't have an abortion. You know, glorify. Again, I'm not religious, dear. I'm an atheist. And by the way, if you're so religious, stop having sex until you're married. That's not me. I'm not. Say, where did I say God in there? I said it's not something to glorify. Well, first of all, the word glorify has religious uh, overtones. And and second of all, uh, the fact is that uh, if you don't want to have a baby, don't have sex yourself. Yeah, so he shouldn't, none of the guys should be having sex then either because it's their sperm. Well, but the, the, if, if, the, if they convince a woman to have an abortion, what's the problem? There's nothing. There's not a problem Good. with that. The problem with them is just leaving them cold and dry. Like to Because who, on they, 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 once we got what we needed, what, what do we need to sit and have a conversation about that anymore? That's so pathetic. Besides, besides you, I got you an egg McMuffin. Maybe I even got you some hash browns on the way, okay? And then when I got you home, I put you under the covers. I was there. I paid for it. Took you home. Put you under your blankie. Then I dumped your ass. God, <laughs> you have a bright future in front of you with relationships of any kind. Darling, I'm uh, very happy with where I'm at right now. Very happy. That's wonderful. But I really... In Not only that, the guys who call in are very happy with what I've taught them. So you say. I well, I, well I I, let's you find mean. out here. Steven, what did you want to say to Danielle? Oh, man, I got a couple things to say. First of all... 
she brings up these points that uh, they, that guys need to stop having sex too. The, the fact is that the guys are doing that part. These guys are using condoms. They're telling people that they are, they're telling their women that they don't want to have babies, and uh, and these women, I mean, they get pregnant by some some accident, some fault, and uh, and now all of a sudden they want to have children after agreement has been made. That's uh, that's that's not the guy's problem. And so uh, if he has to do what he has has to do to get the abortion done uh obviously he's not going to want to continue this relationship afterwards because uh he's already expressed his opinion so what's your point that it's just all the woman's responsibility to not get pregnant if you strap a condom no on? pretty much yeah yeah i i do my part i use i've i've, I've been through a similar situation i told the girl i don't want to have i don't want to have children I, I use a condom every single time, and I uh, usually make sure they're on birth control. She actually told me she was on birth control. And it turns out that she gave me the scare. The the whole a uh, couple callers ago uh, had a similar situation as I did. The whole twelve days. Oh, I'm late. I'm late, and uh, and uh, I wasn't having it. Yeah, but that's what happens when people have sex. There's always a chance. Birth control, condoms, contraception. Well, sure, there's a chance. Time. There's, all, um, there's, there's always a always chance. A you chance. can have a you can have yeah, a abortion to rectify that problem. It's not just like you go and get some cough syrup at the pharmacy and bam, you know your cold is gone. It's not. Why not? Why not? You go to the abortion clinic. You get you have an abortion. Bam, the problem's gone. No more child. That's just, you sound so ignorant. Ignorant. If you spoke to anyone with, like, half a brain, no one's going to say, oh, boom, you just go have a baby taken out of you, and it's just like, voila, I'm all better now. It's not like getting your tonsils out. Well, then these are the, I mean, if these children don't want to go through abortion, don't get pregnant. I, 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 I tell them my, my side every time. I tell them my side every From your body so that you can never impregnate some girl. That's about as equivalent to what you're saying. I've, I've already women. told you. I've already told you. I do my part. I use birth control, and I tell them to use birth control also. Well, then I'd like to have sex. I want to have sex. I have no problem having to... sex. Yeah, good but I don't want to have a child. You're being safe and making sure the girl you're doing it with is on birth control. That's awesome. But you know what? A lot of people don't. And to encourage men to somehow so, get a girl to have an How can you get somebody to do something that they don't believe in doing? Wait a minute. You say, oh, baby, we're going to be together forever. We're going to have a baby in a year from now. Bam. She has an abortion. All right. So what you're saying is then she's not opposed to abortion, correct? Yeah, but it's not about that. So if she's not opposed to abortion, there shouldn't be a problem with telling her to have an abortion. It's about the deceit that you guys are, you're advertising. What about the deceit of saying, I'm having a baby and I'm not getting you and you need up to your responsibility. What about that? You know what? If they want to have a baby, they want to have a baby. And you know what? They can come well, out. Well, and we, and we, can, and we have, we now have, we have a means to smoke these women out and prevent them from having a baby without doing anything illegal. No, it's a fine line. No, You're there's watching. no fine line. There, what what law? What law are we breaking? Has, when she has the baby, guess who's after coming after for child support? Ah, but they don't have the baby if the if the hail mary works, and that's what this hour is about. It's about men calling up and telling how the hail mary has worked for them. And that's what you're disgusted by, that it works so well. You're an atheist, but you're using the term Hail Mary. As Hail Mary, because it's, a, because it's a football a term, dear. If you knew anything about anything. And where did the Hail Mary come from from football? It didn't come from McDonald's. I don't care where it came from. from. I don't care where it came from. All I'm saying is that uh, the Hail Mary is a reference to football. Yeah, so I can use the word glorify without it having... Go right ahead. Lisa, what did you want to say to Danielle? Oh, my God. Danielle, how old are you? I'm 30. Okay. I'm 41. Okay. I went through I went through a termination back in when I was 23. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was on birth control. I was trying to prevent that pregnancy. I paid for it three times, financially, emotionally, and physically. I didn't have that child because it was not something that I was ready for. It's not something I was going to saddle the guy for. I did the right thing, and I have my life has not suffered one second because of it. Two that's people, not two what people I'm play around. About. What? 
That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about them using the, oh, I'll we'll be there for you. We'll have kids in a year from now. We'll stay together. She has the abortion because she thinks this is someone, you know, that she might be with. And then they just turn off their phone and act like she doesn't exist. I you know what men play more things, too. So men play games as much as women do than having an abortion. That's totally okay. different. Okay. Can you listen? Men I'm play like, games as well as as well as women do, and women are terrible. They're vicious. I'm one of them, and I know that we do that. I don't, but there are plenty of us who do. There are plenty of women who will have kids just to get the the guy to pay. I've seen it happen. My best friend did it, and I'm the one that handed the father the child for the first time. That should never happen. No, I agree. I think well, you know what? It's from is like cold heartedly honest. But I'm just saying, in general, I don't think it's right what Tom is saying women, guys should do to the Hail Mary thing. Well, you know what? I think women should be responsible and take responsibility for playing around in the sheets as well as men. And if they're, if they're getting in trouble, they need to take responsibility because a lot of times they don't. More times than not, they don't. But it goes both ways. It, it goes both ways. But the, but the guys don't have to go through the pregnancy. The guys aren't the ones who are getting to soak the girls for the money afterwards. Yeah, the girls the have more responsibility. Have what it feels like afterwards to go through having an abortion either. Oh, my God. Tom, Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I wanted to know what your idea of a perfect woman was. That would be a woman who turns into a six-pack and a sandwich after I have her. <laughs> That's all? Would you don't that, think that have no be, idea of a perfect woman at That would all? be perfect to me. I haven't met one yet, but uh, that would be perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. And we're talking about people who pulled off the old Hail Mary. Is that you? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Well, I just want to tell you that I had the Hail Mary done to me. I'm not sad about it. I'm actually happy that I had it done because I don't have a baby. So I just wanted to say thank you for making the boy make me do it. <laughs> so had you told him you were going to have the baby? No. Um, I actually, I, I believe in the woman's right to choose. And when it, I'm 20 now, and I, I was 20 when it happened. It just recently happened in January that I found out I was pregnant. And I was with the, my boyfriend for about a year, a year and a half. And, like, I got pregnant, and I was really, really scared. I didn't know what to do. You know, I was scared that if I had the abortion that I would regret it. And, you know, he was. He basically said, I, basically what you, what you tell your boys to do. If I don't have the money right now, I really love you, but right now it's not a good time and blah, blah, blah. And so I ended up having it, and I was sad about it for a couple of days. He didn't break up with me. He didn't break up with me. We're still together, but he, like, if it wasn't for him telling me, let's not have it, you know, blah, 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 I probably would have ended up be, still be pregnant and having a baby because I was scared. So, wait, what did he tell you? He told me that, you know, he loves me, but right now, no baby, he can't afford it. He doesn't have, like, a nursery, doesn't have anywhere where we could have a baby. We wouldn't be able to give it everything that we could give it later on in life and blah, blah, blah. So I just wanted to say thank you for telling the boys to tell the girls not to have babies because we're too young. We shouldn't have kids. That's my gig. That's, I just wanted to say thank you and keep doing it. Thank you so much. All right, Tom. Have a good day. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Chris. Hi, Tom. Long time, first time. Thank you. And I just wanted to say that thank God you're around because otherwise these people would be stuck in these stupid situations, adding more children to the world that don't need to be added here if both of the people aren't agreeing to have the child. And I had an abortion when I was 18, and I thank God I had it. And I happened to pay for it myself, and then I told the guy after the fact so that he didn't have to worry about it. And I'm 33 now, no children, and uh, we are married. I know you're not really for that, but... Well, no, that, needless to say, I really don't approve of that. The Tom Likas Show.